Welcome back to Budget Mechanic. When you buy a used car, either from a private party or even from a dealer, you don't want to trust the previous owner's maintenance records. Even if they say they're all up to date, that can mean so many different things to so many different people. So there's a list of things that you want to check out that we're going to talk about, and I've broken them into five categories. Now, if you haven't bought that used car yet, you're still looking, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to share with you a tip that could help you avoid an expensive mistake. So let's get into it. So the first category I want to talk about is what I call the major fluids. So that's going to be your engine oil and your transmission fluid. Now you probably checked the oil when you were looking at the car to buy. But for me, I just like starting with a clean slate of oil so I know it's fresh. Unless that oil looks absolutely perfect on a clean white rag, I'm just going to change the oil. Changing your oil is really cheap to do and it's the most important maintenance that your engine requires to keep it running properly. So even if the previous owner said that they just did it or whatever, I like to do it myself and then I know when it's been done and when to do it next. The same goes for your transmission fluid. The only difference is on a lot of cars now, you don't have a dipstick to check the transmission fluid. So sometimes you can't even check that when you're looking at a car to buy, which makes it even more important that you get in there and do a transmission fluid change right away. The next category I want to talk about is what I call the minor fluids. So this is going to be your brake fluid, power steering fluid, and your coolant. So these minor fluids are ones that I find people neglect. So everyone knows about engine oil and transmission, but they usually don't realize that you're supposed to flush your minor fluids as well. Starting off with the brake fluid. So even though the level is great, when brake fluid gets old, it starts to break down, starts attracting water, and your brakes get spongy, and you start rusting your brake components. So you gotta flush that brake fluid. Brake fluid, when it's new and fresh, is almost completely clear. So you'll know if your brake fluid starts getting a little bit yellowy or brown, time to change it. If you're interested, we have a great video on how to do it yourself. Check it out above. Next one is power steering fluid. Same on this one. Fresh power steering fluid is basically clear. So if there's any dark fluid in here, it means it's starting to break down. And when power steering fluid breaks down, because it's under such high pressure, any particles in there start getting like forced around like sandpaper on the inside of power steering pumps and lines. You start to get power steering pump leaks, uh, uh, seals break down. So it's much easier to flush the power steering fluid before you have expensive problems. We've made a video on how you can flush your own power steering fluid. We'll put the link right above. The last fluid I want to talk about is your engine coolant. When engine coolant breaks down, it stops cooling the engine as effectively, which is bad. Additionally, when it gets old, it stops protecting the engine against corrosion. So you start getting rust and corrosion inside there, which can lead to expensive repairs. Also, the previous owner may have just used mostly water in the system instead of coolant, and you don't wanna leave water sitting in your engine. The next category we wanna talk about is spark plugs. So basically what you wanna do is pull out one spark plug and give it a look. And if it's bad, you're gonna to wanna to replace all of them. On this car, I've already taken off the coil and loosened up the plug, and here it is. So you're looking for wear around the electrode of the spark plug or big chunky carbon deposits. When spark plugs start to fail, your car starts running poorly, you get bad gas mileage, less power. More importantly and expensively, it can cause your coil to prematurely fail. So your coil sits on top of your spark plug, causes it to fire. And when these are not firing properly, it puts a lot of stress on the coil. These coils are around $100 to replace. Spark plug, five to 10. Much better that you go and get a set of new spark plugs than having to replace fried out ignition coils. In addition, if a spark plug fails or causes an ignition coil to totally fail, you'd be getting into a misfire situation, which would cause your engine to run really rough, stall, may not even be drivable. The next category I wanna talk about is air filters. So you have your engine air filter as well as your cabin AC filter. I've worked on cars where the owner never changed the engine air filter and they were totally disgusting. If a car runs with a super dirty air filter, it's not only gonna affect the fuel efficiency and performance of the engine, it can also cause damage in the long run. Plus, it's just so easy to change an air filter, but so many people forget to do it. About 92.4% of Americans don't know what a cabin AC filter is. So chances are the previous owner of your car didn't either. Cabin AC filters are usually right behind the glove box and they filter the air in your AC system. Now, when these filters get dirty, they block the flow of air in your AC, and when they get filled with contaminants, they can really start smelling like mildew or other garbage. 
and it puts a lot of stress on your AC blower motor and it can cause it to fail. These are really cheap, easy to switch out. So unless you look at it and it's perfectly clean, I'll just throw a new one in. If you're interested, we have a video all about cabin filters you can check out here. Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you like it, drop us a comment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. The next section that I wanna talk about is wheels. Now, the primary concern with wheels is gonna be your brakes. Now, it's not always possible when you're checking out a used car to see the brakes without taking the wheels off. For a lot of them, you've gotta actually remove the wheels to check the brake pads. Now, the reason this is a concern is not only safety, but if the pads wear completely out and start digging into the rotor, well, now you're not just replacing a set of pads, you're also replacing an expensive rotor as well. So that can mean hundreds of dollars to repair your brakes, or if you take it to a shop, even more. We made a video on how to easily check your brake pads, and you can check it out right here. While you're here at the wheel, you also wanna check your tire pressure. All tires, new and old, very, very slowly leak air. So you gotta periodically check them and inflate them. If you don't inflate them properly, they will wear unevenly and prematurely, and you're wasting money on new tires. So tires are labeled with the max pressure that they can take, and you wanna kinda of run them pretty close to that number for max efficiency. To do that, you can get a tire inflator at a big box store, which is kinda of cool. It has a pressure reader in the back, or you can go to a gas station or something that offers tire inflation. On that same note, an alignment is a great way to preserve good tires. If a car is out of alignment, it's gonna blow through tires a lot faster than it normally would, and a set of tires can easily be like $800, whereas an alignment you could probably get for 150. The one exception to that would be if you're already planning to replace some worn out tires, I would skip the alignment until you get the new tires. Now I know this sounds like a lot, but a Saturday and a couple hundred bucks of materials, now it's gonna save you some headaches and potentially thousands of dollars in the future. Now as promised, the bonus tip. So for those of you that are still looking for a car, haven't bought one yet, there's a little something I like to call the 100,000 mile rule. So around 100,000 miles is when cars start needing extra attention. Things are breaking, wearing out, needing to be addressed. So it can be little things like your window motor. It can be radiators, starters, or even bigger stuff like your AC system going out. Uh, 100,000 miles is also when transmissions sometimes need to be serviced. And ironically, 100,000 miles is also when a lot of warranties run out. And a lot of sellers knowing that sell their cars before all that stuff happens. So it's just something to be aware of. It doesn't mean don't buy a car at 95,000 or at 105,000 miles. Just factor that into your offering price. If you wanna hear some more tips on buying a used car or you wanna keep the car you already own in tip-top shape, check out our other videos here.